Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Learn From Us podcast. As always, my name is Seth. I'm here with some guy named Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello, Seth. Introduce yourself. I'm kidding. I'm Paul. So, um, so people can know when we recorded this, Ross Perot just died. Are you a fan of his? I mean, I liked him. I liked when Saturday Night Live made fun of him. Of course. We had a riveting basketball game last night. We did. Eight basketball games. No, how many was it? Yeah, it was five. And, I think they went five and three against us. Paul has a court in his house. We invite some buddies <laughs> over and play. And, uh, it's not necessary. It's super rad, bro. It is rad. Um, your shot's looking great. Look like you're in shape. Svelte and sexy. What is svelte? Uh, it's just a funny word. It is a very funny word. It's like a mixture of velvet and Seth and I had a, Seth and I were on the same team yesterday with his buddy Luke. I'll kind of call him my buddy Luke. Very nice guy. Yeah. And we had a game where we didn't miss a shot. We went seven for seven. Was that what it was? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, and then then we missed the next three games. We missed most of the shots. <laughs> but uh, after the after the game last night, I sort of asked you this intriguing question because I like to hear your thoughts, as as do many. Is um, there's all the news filled with these um, these folks coming over the southern border? Yeah, <laughs> and we're putting them in Mexicans. Uh, we're putting them in uh, the concentration camps. They're calling them now. Is that what they're calling them? Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So, <laughs> so I'm wondering, I asked you calmly, like, what do we do with these folks? Because um, I had the old Democrat Republican argument with a buddy of mine this, this weekend, where, of course, he spent, he just was basically regurgitating Fox News to me. <laughs> and uh, why, do, why do you libs focus on Fox News so much? It's like the one. Well, there are no other channels. If there was a second channel. Right, for, Repu- for, for the right wing. Yeah, right? I wish there was. But what are the left wing channels? Are you ready for this one? All, every all other one. Them. Every yeah. other one of them. And I'm sure the left wing the left wing folks think that, like, you mean all the normal people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the crazies on one side? <laughs> yeah. um, but no, he was regurgitating, you know, what he saw in there. And, um, but I, it, did, it did come to me, like, what are we supposed to? So I asked you, what are we supposed to do if thousands of people come across? How much money do we pour into taking care of them? What do we do with them? What's the right thing to do? And you had some interesting ideas on it. Well, I'm libertarian, mm-hmm. and I believe in open borders. And I know everybody who's a Republican now is like taking their MAGA, Make America Great Again hats and putting it on and going, oh, my God, Paul's going to die. Well, they're terrorists too, Paul. You know, that's what you're <laughs> told. So, so how do we hate All them, them foreigners. Those, what's the um, um, Dave Chappelle, Mexicans, and what does he say in that first episode of... Um, I was never into that show as much as I needed to be. I know. Oh, wow. It's incredible. Oh, it's I actually incredible. love Dave Chappelle's stand-up. And he lives um, in a suburb of, D- of Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yellow Springs. So. Yeah, isn't that incredible? But get back to it. What are we supposed to do with these folks? Apparently, so we- Let we- them in. You let them in as long as they're law-abiding, good citizens who want to be productive members of society. Now, the only, the only time we can figure out they're not law-abiding is when they break the law, I assume, right? So- Listen, I'm never in favor of freeloaders. We came to this country legally- Follow the rules. You and your parents? Yeah. Now, granted, both my parents are doctors, so I'm sure, you know, that helped. But we were law-abiding citizens. We came here. We followed the rules. We applied for political asylum. We were productive members of society. I think that what bothers me the most is the entitlement issue of, you know, that uh, everybody's going towards is like, they're taking our jobs. Okay. Well, they're taking your job. You're willing to, they're willing to work for less money. This is why I brought this up, because you're huge with this. And so we hear... The idea nowadays in the news about we must raise the minimum wage. Uh-huh. It's inflationary. Yeah. Because the next thing you do is you raise minimum wage. Inflation skyrockets. And then everybody goes, oh, my God, inflation's too high. It's like, oh, boy. Well, that, that's the thing about the thing about investing in economy is there are trickle down. Speaking of uh, there are effects that happen. There are domino effect of things. If everybody in the world, if everybody in the U.S. made a million dollars a year, wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Well, what would happen? all of a sudden the poverty level would be a million dollars a year or whatever the number would be. Maybe it'd be half a million a year. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. It's not like you just give people money and all of a sudden everybody's richer. No, it's, 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 it's unfortunately it's, it, I always, I, so my, my thing now, and I read this somewhere and it's true. Everybody loves socialism because everybody's equal, but that's not really true. In capitalism, anybody can be rich and there are rich and there are poor, but there are a lot of people in the middle in socialism everybody's poor except for a few select few who supported socialism and became the powerful people. They're the rich people then all of a sudden. So I look at it saying, if we just allow the economy and the world to operate, free trade, open borders, 
everybody's allowed to work for whatever they want to work for. If you're, if, if, if Gio wants to, is 16 years old and goes, you know, dad, I know minimum wage is 10 bucks, but I'd be fine working that job for seven because it's, it's more fun. But now the government's going to say, you can't work there for $7, Gio. You, we're not going to let you do that. It's his life. If you, wanna, if you want a Mexican to come here and work for $6, if you're going to let him, if a Mexican wants to come here and work for $6 an hour, why shouldn't they be allowed to? If you have anybody, a, 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 a stay-at-home mom or dad who goes, I just want some side money and I'm okay doing very easy work for seven bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. Why is that a problem? I don't understand why everybody, but we're, it's like we're forcing people economically to make, we're, 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 we tell people we're all about freedom. And of course, I'm going to blame the left for this. The bluff talks about, it's still the Republicans too. We tell people we're all about freedom, but then we're forcing them to, we're, we're telling them you can't go do certain things because it's not right for you. We're deciding what's right for everybody. I don't get that. It just, it just blows my mind. And guess what? That's the benefit of having a very wealthy economy. The average income in this country is almost 60,000 mm -hmm. per person. Not well, per, per person, per family. Per, per capita. The, the per capita income in this country is like, we have 21 trillion, I think. Mm. In, in GDP, that's billion, that's trillion. We have 330 people, 330 million people. Yeah, it's 60,000 a person. Wow. G GDP. So that's because the GDP you look at and say, that's how you look at the health of the economy and all that stuff. So GDP per person here is like $60,000 per year. It's like, man, that's a lot of money. Is that number skewed when the working class folks say that uh, there's five people that have more money than the other? And my comment is, but... It, Everything is an average. There's going to be more rich and more poor. So I'm reading a book right now um, called Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. And in it, this guy, Philip Fisher, wrote this book in the 50s, and he said something very intriguing. He said, this is wonderful because in the past, we had a lot of, a few, a lot of rich people, a lot of poor people, and not many in the middle. Now we have... A lesser rich people, lesser really poor people, a lot more in the middle. I'm a big believer in a strong, strong middle class. But that doesn't mean then that you have to take away from everybody who's really wealthy and, and say it's wrong that somebody has $100 billion. First off, if they have $100 billion, that's not $100 billion per year. That's net worth. Does Bill Gates make a lot of money per year? Yes, he probably makes 3 or $4 billion a year is mm -hmm. my guess with dividends and stock sales and all that stuff. $3 billion per year is changing the per capita GDP by $9 per person in the country off 60,000. It's changing it by nine. So if you have a hundred of them, it's changing it by $900. And there aren't a hundred people in this country making $4 billion, $3 billion a year. We, it's just this, what we talked about before, it's like this jealousy. It's like the Mexicans. Like It's like, we hate them because they're taking our jobs. It's like, well, why don't you just become more valuable? Why don't you just go do other things? I don't know. It's just, it's easy to, it's easy for me to sit there and somebody would listen to this going, well, it's easy for that asshole to say that because of blah, blah, blah. But I just don't like this whole victim mentality and entitlement almost of like, well, I deserve that job because I'm American. It's like, well, no, you just, everybody deserves a job if they're willing to work, put the hours in, blah, blah, blah. I was just at the UPS store sending something to a, to a, a, a business associate friend of mine. And the lady who owns the UPS store was on the phone. And she, I think she knows I have a business. Because we were talking about, so she hangs up and goes, oh, employees. <laughs> and I laughed. I said, she goes, do you want some? I'm like, I got, I got enough. And then I said to her, I go, let me ask you a question. Uh, out of every 10 applicants who say to you, I'm coming in for an interview, how many come in? She goes, oh, so few. I go, what do you pay? 12, 13 bucks an hour? She's like, yeah. She goes, she goes I, she's like, like, if I post an ad on Indeed or Craigslist, she's like, of the people who actually call and say, I'm coming in for an interview with scheduled time, she's like 10%, 15%, which is lower than I thought it'd be. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it going, wow. So we have this country that, that sits there and says, the working, the people want to work, people want to go make money. But then you have people who've actually called and said, I want to come in for an interview. Let's schedule for Tuesday at 2.45 and 10% of them show up. Ours is about 25 or 30%, which is still, I think it's a pretty good number. On college grads who were offering good base salaries and commissions where they can make almost six figures a year, college grads will get about 50% show up. How can you sit there and say a Mexican's taking away your job? They're not. They're not taking away your job. Trust me. All you need to do to get your job is show up to the interview, be clean, direct, and talk coherently. <laughs> Am I wrong, Seth? Well, I mean, I know uh, the jobs that... that, that you know, folks who are coming up from South America, uh, Central America, you know, the jobs they're taking, not necessarily 
Middle America actually wants. Oh, but they didn't talk about the poor, that, though. Yeah, farmers in that area are getting, they can't find work. They can't find people to do the jobs that these people were doing. Um, I, I'm sure you know they're amazing workers. I mean, I, I've, I've By the way, some are amazing workers and some are not. I've hired out jobs uh, to people for my house, this and this, and sure enough, like, when it's a when when it's, when it's like a van full of like six Mexican guys come them they work their asses off. <laughs> yeah, they do. You know why? So Nestor, it's our manager in Mexico. He said, "Tell to me, me about this." Yeah. So we talked about this last week, and he said to me, "Paul, the Mexicans who leave Mexico to only stay in the U.S. permanently are different than the Mexicans who go to the U.S. to get money to bring back to Mexico." Yeah. You'll get a lot more hustle out of those guys, but those guys will all be ten people in a two bedroom apartment living there on cots for six months out of the year because they're going to make. Three years with the wages in those six months send a lot of it back home. I hear that they send. They're just yeah. I'm here sacrificing a lot of things. They send all their money back home. They got a whole family down in yep. Honduras, and it's crazy. Listen, more power to them. They're trying to make a better life for their family down there. Yeah, it's admirable. You know, I was uh, we went golfing in Mexico once, and my um, my caddy was named Paolo, and I said to him, "Hey, you ever been to the states?" Like, yeah, I lived there for about four years. I go, really? Why? He's like, well, I want to save up to buy a house here. Because I wanted to pay cash for a home. I go, you did? He's like, yeah, I paid $15,000 cash for a brand new home. That was his goal. So he went to California, worked, saved the $15,000 over like a two and a half year period, mm. stayed a little bit longer to make some more money, came back to Mexico, paid cash for his house, and now he's a caddy and he probably makes a few hundred dollars a, a week at most, and he's happy. He's like, yeah, I have my house paid for. So he came to the US, did his job, and left. Nobody's, t- nobody's complaining about that guy. Oh, yeah, he left. I mean, I don't hear anybody saying, why that, you know, it's like, guys, they're coming here. They're also leaving too sometimes. I mean, people want to live here. And that's a good thing for our country. We should love that people want to live here. We should be worried if people are like, I need to get the F out of this place. This place sucks. No, we don't have that. We have a great problem to have. And I just feel like, let them in. If they're going to be productive members of society, let them in. It's just xenophobia. Then we're like, oh, they're terrible people. Let them in. Yeah, they're, 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 they're rapists. They're, well, they're not all rapists. I mean, I'm sure there's rapists amongst them. True. Yeah. How about we send our rapists down to Mexico? <laughs> That'd be pretty good. I'm sure they'd love them down there. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. I'm just, you know, we, we talk about this stuff and it's, it's political and economic. That's what I like about it. It's like- That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not just, um, it, it's, when I look at costs for things and I see 15, when I read, I read an article the other day, it was like $15 an hour, Increased pay for people, but also net lost 140,000 jobs for people or something like that because, you know, you're just going to have, I mean, that's, people don't realize, people just think small business owners, these rich people walking around town with, guys, small business owners, being a small business owner is not easy. You got cash flow, you got this. I mean, you're a small business owner, Seth, and you're starting a new venture and how, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, you're going to have tight cash flow for a while. Yeah. What are you going to do about that? That's why you're hiring foreigners, you you bastard. You don't support America. You don't support America. (laughs) Well, I mean, yeah, it does come down to me, you know, it's like... Legally, by the way, he supports, uh, he's hiring foreigners. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, well, I want someone to make an edit for me or do something for me that would take me many, many hours so I can hire someone from across the sea. For, for how much? Uh, for a, a quarter of what a, a young American thinks he's owed. Yep. Like, I have young folks call me and say, hey, I'd love to work with you or I'd love to do something with you. I'm interested in media. And it's like, well, you better be prepared that there's someone on Upwork that'll do your job for a quarter of the price. Yeah. And so it's somewhat tough. Like I've actually, yeah. So how does that switch? How do I get, how do we get back to, well, is that a bad thing or? I don't think it's a bad thing. Economies change. I've always said just people, the people who worked in the, in the, in the locomotive business, when the cars were invented, didn't mean everybody lost their jobs permanently. They just changed jobs. Yeah. Economies change over time, and that's just the way it is. Just because we don't, we're going to make less stuff over time, people. That is the reality of the U.S. That's the reality of wealthy countries. Pretty soon, we won't be making stuff in China anymore. Africa is going to be the big emerging market we're going to put factories in. I mean, what's the poorest place in the world right now? Africa, right? Detroit. Oh no, <laughs> I like Detroit. Well, Flint's struggling. Haven't you seen? Like, I used to live in Flint. Do you know I used ever? to live in Flint? No. 1984, when we first came to the U.S., we lived in Flint for. Two years, two and a half years. Yeah. I never know what to think of document. I mean, I never know what to think about documentaries because they're Michael Moore one sided. <laughs> yeah, but the Flint water crisis and I know what it's politicians terrible. did on both sides is oh, it's terrible. It's crazy. I don't even think it's fixed yet, right? I don't know. Is it fixed? This one dude I was talking about though is also says he's absolutely in love with the tariffs. 
Why? Because why? Because it supports American jobs. It's helping his business, though. Oh well, that's a little selfish. But I understand. He has a business that uh, can be easily undercut by people buying stuff from China. So the second why doesn't he just buy from China himself? And oh, it's probably turnaround time. Um, I don't know. It was just he was just saying like. He's in love with the tariffs. He thinks they're incredible. Of course, because it supports them. Yeah. All right. I know there's bolstering, like on both bolstering. I know it's like on both sides. It's like there's so much fighting. I was thinking about this driving on the way here. Like you have this black and white Democrat Republican, and but I don't look view it as black and white. I look at it as all the same color, shade of gray, shade of bullshit, shade of brown. By the way, I had a dream with Bernie Sanders in it last night. Well, he brought Bernie up. Did he? About the free college and how that's oh, that's absolutely terrible. Gonna work. Your buddy did. No, no, no. He he, he was asking me how that's going to work. And oh. I was like, I, what'd you I fr- say? I, frankly, I have no idea. I well, mean, what we talked about yesterday, we talked about we talking about MJ and talking about medical costs and things like that. It's like, yeah. you, you, you guys, everybody wants free healthcare. Cool, sounds good. It'll skyrocket in price. It'll our costs will be astronomical because every single person in the sun will get a cough and go right to the hospital and to protect their asses, they're going to have to go do all these tests and all these things, and the people who really are sick will suffer. I mean, it literally is the worst idea. Anything free is abused. Anything free is abused. Hmm. Look, at the public, look at the public school system in this country. There are many public schools that cost way more than a private school. Shaker Heights High School costs 19000 per student to educate. Walsh costs eleven five, twelve thousand. 12000 yeah. This is not a coincidence, people. Tell me about that. Well, look at our, look at our, um, look at, listen, it's very sensitive. I never sensitive. thought about it that way. It's a very sensitive topic, but uh, look at the, look at the, um, just look at the pensions for teachers now. The pensions for a public school teacher in Ohio are, first off, they're well paid. They don't pay social security. So they don't have to buy into the bullshit we buy into. And they get the average of the la- of the three top years, three yeah. years of their pay for life. Once they hit 30 years, a lot of these guys hit 30 years at 55, 52. Yeah, 52. So they can live an extra 30, 35 years on the best pay with increases every year. That is not going to work. I'm sorry. It's not going to work. And when you have these bloated costs, what do you think that leads to? The, 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 the private school way to go is just so much more efficient. They're a business. They have to operate that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm done fond of what you said because I have teacher friends and like, yeah, that's their main goal is get through those years and then just... Literally, I had a teacher friend of mine who's like, I'm seven years away from retirement. I hate my job, but I can't sacrifice Oh, them. absolutely. And I don't blame them. And they literally say, I hate my job. Okay. I don't blame them. If I was seven years away, I'd put in 23 years, 24 years, whatever the number was, 26 years. I'd be like, and guess what? That's going to change over time. Over time, it's going to go from, I think it used to be 30 years, then it became 33 years. And eventually over time, it's just going to, because this is not going to work long term. It's bloated. These are all, that's a thing that really bothers me. Everybody looks at everything as what am I getting as opposed to what's going to work? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know how any of this is going to work or how it's going to change. Uh, that's, so that the, the best part and the bad part about the country is we're so big, it's hard for things to change and that's a good and bad thing. It's a bad thing because we're probably never going to become free market completely or com- completely communist or socialist. The bad part is though, when we do have a major problem, it's going to take a major, major problem for us to change. Like catastrophe. Yeah. Uh, who knows? What what changed after the last financial catastrophe? I don't know. What did change? Good call. That's a good question, Seth. What do you think changed? <laughs> I don't see much difference. <laughs> do you? I mean, um, we're both in love with that movie. Um, I just lost uh, it. The Big Short? Yeah, The Big Short. Oh, it's a great movie. How it all fell apart and and uh, it probably could happen again. And, and then, Well, by the way, there will always be financial crises. But I love at the end, they're like, oh, and they blame poor people and teachers. I'm like, I don't remember poor people and teachers ever being blamed. For the 2008 collapse? Yeah. Wouldn't you say that most people blame people walking away from their houses or buying houses Uh, they couldn't afford? That's not a blame. But you can't sit there and say, listen, there was definitely a lot of uh, shadiness going on on Wall Street and by these mortgage brokers, 1,000%. I blame them. But I also sit there and say, but you can't blame them when you sign up for a mortgage that you didn't understand was going to adjust to me. I know you sit there and look at me like that, but I sit there and say, well, wait a second. If you, if you don't understand what you're buying, don't buy it. You know how many trillions of people don't understand you're how right. a percentage uh, works? You know how many trillions of people probably shouldn't own homes? Guys, yeah. renting isn't bad. Renting is not bad. Everybody has to remember that. I'm saying it because I'm a landlord. No, I'm just kidding. I'm saying it because renting isn't bad. 
You don't have to worry about anything. You just pay your rent every month and maintenance is taken care of. Landscaping, taxes, everything's taken care of. Home ownership is the, is the American dream. Really? Okay. Listen, I love owning a home. I think people love owning a home, but there are costs associated with it. Yeah, I, I have never actually thought I'm owning my home. I'm just sort of renting, renting it, it from the bank. bank. <laughs> but you're not, but I understand. Well, I mean, um, as of yet, How I is have... your beautiful home going, Seth? Well, thank you for asking. Seth just moved into a very beautiful home on lots of land where Lenny can frolic. Lenny's my Havanese dog, a year and a half old. Um, so the catalyst for moving... It's he's older than a year and a half. A year and a half, yeah. He's only six months older than Howard? Let me think about this. He'll be... so. I get mixed up with born date and when we acquired him, <laughs> for, you know, via off via waivers. trade, yeah, yeah. <laughs> off waivers. Um, so no, I guess he'll be two in October. But um, I mean, moving up to do, moving up to be around you and my folks were both the catalysts. Uh, we have friends, family. You have um, a lot of friends up here. Yeah, I just went to Akron Coffee Roasters again this morning. With whom? And just myself. Oh, nice. And uh, we needed coffee at the house. Um, Beth and I are somewhat coffee snobs, and we just like really nice coffee. We just love it. And um, the owner was finally there, my buddy AJ. Oh, nice. And uh, he hardly recognized me because I don't think he, I haven't had this beard that long. But you're and friends so, on Facebook, aren't you? Well, he's not very, he, yeah, he's not very Facebook active. Okay, gotcha. But anyway, it was nice to see him, and the business is doing well. I thought about the business, like, man, you got to sell a lot of $4 cups of coffee, you know, to run a business. You got to, it's a lot. Yeah, but when the coffee costs 37 cents or whatever it costs. You still got to sell them, though. I know, that's true. You got to get hundreds of people to come in on a daily, you know, 100 people on a daily basis. And anywho, anywho. Is it going well? I mean, they're, I, I wouldn't know any different, but I mean, they're selling coffee, you know, seems to be doing good. How did I get on top of You're talking moving, about moving, moving, yeah. Yeah. So how's the house? The house is wonderful. Um... We have not looked back to our old house. I mean, um, we definitely have friends. We're in Columbus. It's just booming. Uh, Columbus is, Columbus is high. Ohio is just growing so much. It's just getting ridiculous. Like uh, the traffic. It's like you have a road, and then they put businesses in stoplight. And there's a little bit of there's and then there's a little bit of a field there, and they put four more businesses in. Well, those people got to get out, so they put another stoplight in, and all of a sudden, what used to be like get off and drive to my house is like twelve stoplights. <laughs> yeah. And now it's like if you want to go anywhere, you can't. So we were driving around here in Akron. Uh, we went to visit uh, a little a little birthday party last Friday, and we left the house at six fifteen and just drove right through. Just just drove through everything. And I think like, eighteen is very busy. That road. Oh, yeah. Well, I consider like, I'm like, oh, I can't go to 18. It's too busy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I mean, at least it's moving. You're right. Yeah. I mean, I had to travel like 17 miles a couple of Thursdays ago from Grove City to Polaris, which is basically, you know, Columbus has one of those interstate loops around it like a clock. Yep. So I was going from 6 to 12 or 7 to 12 right through the middle, and it almost took me an hour and 45 minutes. What? Yeah. I, was, I gave myself two hours. <laughs> and uh, so it's just getting ridiculous down there. But I have not looked back. It's nice to be home and calm. I've probably mentioned this to you is living in a calmer place. The one thing I have to keep up is like my business drive because it's more lackadaisical setting where you can like, well, let's just go hang out by the fire out back and, you know, just sit around mm -hmm. and talk about life and I guess really enjoy life, you know. Which is very important. It is. But there's now this mix of like down there I was like r hustle and bustle and businesses and talking to people and now it's like. You hear crickets and birds and fr frogs at night, you know, and it's like, let's just hang out with the kids. So, yeah, but at nighttime, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you can do work, but you can't muster up more business. Than, well, yeah, you can actually. But. I do a lot of my work from like eight to 11. Do you? That's great. Yeah. Well, not that I'm like, yeah, it's just when, it, when the kids go down, I can yeah. finally focus on something. So, yeah, yeah. Your, your house is great. I'm glad you moved up there. I mean, listen, it's, uh, it just made a lot of sense how much you were coming up here anyhow. You're we yeah. playing basketball and all, I mean, all your friends, but, all your college and high school friends are up here, right? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Who stayed in? So it's, it's, it's going to be a great time. Some Plus, are becoming your friends now. Yeah. I like them a lot. Yeah. It's nice. Except for MJ. MJ's our doctor friend in Mansfield. <clears throat> I hope he hears this and goes, what? Why? So yeah, I love talking about the economy and jobs with you. Cause you definitely have, I mean, you're obviously more intelligent and more. Well, some would say I'm stupid cause he doesn't get it. I'm sure there are people out there who, I don't think many people who listen to this probably would, but, but people in general, I mean, look at, look at um, AOC. I always forget her name. And, um, I, I do too. Cortez. I don't remember. Something. AOC. Somebody's going to call me a sexist, a racist for not remembering her name, but 
Yeah. Um, we'll not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here the, anymore. The triple names <laughs> always get me. I can't, yeah. you know, the John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswalds, <laughs> you know, the triple names. Like I can't keep up with them. Yeah, the hyphenated names. <laughs> I was Jesus God, these names nowadays. I mean, the names of these just, kids. Is AOC, fucking, Lee Harvey Oswald, and John Wilkes Booth. Those are the, uh, the three. triple names I can think of. <laughs> no, dude, I was you know I'm in the wedding business, and luckily I haven't come across too many triple names. But you get these tri- these, these you talk to some of these people, and she's just like like oh we just got married, yeah, and like you know, and I looked it up. We're the only Lebowitz hyphen McPhersons in the world. It's like no shit, like. <laughs> Please go to our wedding registry at Leibovitz I'm McPherson Love Day well, then, they, com. You know, then you get. I mean, I, I feel sorry for these younger kids now because they're getting these names like you know Canyon and Bird, <laughs> and then then they have a middle name, then they have a hyphenated name, and I'm like, dear God, what happens in 20 years when you have hyphenated people and nobody's given up? It's like, and they're all inbreeding. Like I'm so not like one of these like let's make America great again, go back to the 40s where all women are you know you got to take his name. I'm not for that. I mean, I'm not for that. In fact, I told you my my sister in law. Her last name is Durr, and she married a guy named Dobert. So both names start D-O-E, and they were going to legally make a name Durbert. <laughs> they wanted to legally <laughs> change their names to I Durbert. didn't know this. It's hilarious. Did they, wh- why did they not do I, it? I can't remember why. Well, she's in the, she was in the military, and so I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, it was just really funny. So I'm not, like, against, like, yes, women must take, you know, so on and so forth's name, but, like, but like these, these my opinion is keep getting, the name, just keep your last name. Let's not do these hyphenation things. Yeah, sure. Or like, a, look, I'm I'm sure women are like probably grinding their teeth at the moment. Like whatever you gals want to do, go for it. I've seen gals take take their maiden name and make it their middle name. Yeah, or that's whatever. a very common thing. I'm just saying, when you have two, 20 years from now, when you have two people who are very strong with their hyphenated name, I mean, we're going to get to six part. We're going to have Dikembe Matumbo <laughs> in here with him and his seven. So some people won't know that. He's got like 17 names because he's he? from Africa. Yeah, he has seven. Dikembe Matumbo has like officially like Can 17 look names. Yeah, I'm sure look, look them up. up. Are you going to try and pronounce them? No, no Yeah, chance. I mean, are there going to be people with four word hyphenated last names coming? The Dikembe Matumbo Because we all have to be u- unique. Name. You're looking it up. It said remix. The next one was, oh my gosh. So Dikembe, Dikembe Mutombo. Dikembe Mutombo, Mapalando, Macumba, Jean-Jacques, Wamatombo. There it is. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's his Wikipedia page. So it's not 17, but it's it's up there. One, two, three, four. F- you include the hyphenation, five, six, seven words. Oh, seven, maybe seven. That's where I got seven, 17, was seven. Yeah. That's incredible. Anyway, so the naming is just, you know, I understand people have to be. I understand people have to be special nowadays, but yeah, the names we're all special. Can't keep up with it. And then of course I have the special names too with my kids. I'm not 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 too bad, but I mean Hank and G I love Hank. I love the name Hank. I mean, listen, I love the name Geo too, but nobody calls their kid Hank anymore. Hank's like, you know, yeah. It's gonna be like Gertrude soon. It's gonna come come back come around. Back again. Well, they, they, these little they, you see kids now with they have little daughters, and now they're going back to these daughters' names are like Pearl and Vi I love it, man. Like yeah. a little girl named Violet or yeah, that's a cute Pearl name. or Rose. It's it just great. So yeah. uh, all right, what what the hell are we talking about? What were we talking about before that came up? Well, moving home and all that. And yeah, but right after that. I can't recall. Oh, you know me. Good story. Great story. I'm well, just glad I, I it is glad that you're I am glad that you're I mean here. It's not like I really knew you before, but at the same point, it's uh, I personally believe Akron's a great place to raise a kid. Yeah, I'm, I'm currently doing that and uh, trying my best. Um, I had a conversation with my nephew who's 12. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I was like, gosh, you know, like, do you save any money? Something came up. It was like, hey, how much, you know, oh, I, I, he said something like, oh, I have $100. And I'm like, man. My kid, my nine-year-old, is very proud. He has over like a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's pretty up, impressive. And one Tesla stock. Yeah. So, and I said, "Damn, I want, what is the compounding interest? Like, say at eighteen, like I had this grand vision. I was like, you know, say you wanted a car. Yeah. Most people would say, well, make your kid work, save the money, and then make him buy his car. Yep. God, I thought to myself, I said, man, I told Gio, I said, listen, if you save up five grand by the time you're eighteen, and then you save that money. I'll buy you the car. Oh, that's great. I would rather see him save it yeah. than spend it. And I said, well, what do you think? $5,000 at 18 and then $1,000 a year for 50 years. I can do the math right now. Do it. For 50 years? I thought I knew what it was. But what I'm kind sure. of rate of return are you talking about? <laughs> Call it 8. 8%. So 50 years, right? So $5,000 when your 18-year-old turns 18 and then only $1,000 a year until he retires at 68. Dun, 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 dun. 
Paul's doing the math. This is riveting radio here. Look at him. He's typing away. I'm surprised he doesn't know this in his head. It's a complicated $948,770. Just a million bucks? Yeah, just a nine fifty. But it's a thousand, but you've you've saved a total of fifty five thousand dollars. Fifty five thousand dollars and became nine hundred and fifty thousand. So do it at five thousand a year. Oh, it's it's huge. Astronomical, right? Not astro- I mean it depends what astronomical means. Is it really that crazy to think to save five thousand bucks a year? Two point nine million. Two million eight hundred and sixty eight thousand. Yep. Wow. So here's the thing. This is why I always teach the Walsh kids when I'm there teaching. I always tell them, guys, seven, seven thousand, eleven. It's like eleven thousand, seven thousand five hundred dollars a year, or something like that. And I did ten percent because that's what usually. But of course, you're right. Probably doing eight percent is better. I mean, it's like ten million bucks. It's like eight million. No, sorry, it's like eight million dollars. Yeah. It's like, listen, it's just, and, and everybody's like, well, I can save seven thousand a year. In, in, in college, you can save seven thousand a year. Well, when you break that down, though, you know, six hundred dollars a month. In college, for some people who can't have jobs because they're taking labs and, and, and Oh, no. What are we going to do? We have labs because we have class two times a day. Oh, Lord. Did you work in college? Yeah, I worked full time. Not full time. 30 hours a week. So did Beth. Suck it. You were sitting there going, did you work in college? I did work in college. I didn't have to work in college. I still worked. Yeah, I'm saying, but so did Beth. She worked her ass off. I think her grades, obviously. My grades are better because of it, I believe. I was playing sports still, so messing around. Oh, my God. There was so... By the way, sports is like a full-time job in college. I still worked, actually. Did you? With sports, yeah. What'd you do? Bowling alley manager. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a bowling alley manager. Would you look at the app? <laughs> um, By the way, we were playing golf Sunday. My one time a year, I played golf. Yeah, and the caddies were so young, they didn't know who Ed Bassmaster was. I'm like, just go to Instagram. Look up. Here, look at the app. Oh, <laughs> look at the app. <laughs> <laughs> <He just push. laughs> I didn't actually know his name. I'd Bassmaster. I should follow him more. You have to. He's great. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just uh, I I worked in college because I was like oh, maybe, maybe something fun to do and gave me extra cash. I always I like to eat a lot in college. Yeah. And I felt bad always like swiping my dad's credit card. So I was like, oh you, yeah. So yeah. I was like, Dad, you, know, you pay the rent in the car and pretty much my entire life. But uh, it's funny. Can I make a funny comment? So we all know that I, my parents were doctors. They were very generous with me. I got my start from that. So we were playing. So once a year, I play golf. Once a year, I play golf. And mm-hmm. it's with my father. And we, we bet $1,000 in the golf round. So I'm beating him again. By the way, I shot a career low. I think I told you that. I shot a career low. So in the middle of the golf round, I go, I better get this damn money, Dad. Because like last time I took him a while to pay, he's like, you get your money. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get my money. And he looked at me. He goes, haven't I given you enough already? And I was like, Uh-oh. well played. <laughs> I was like, touche. So then I went and crushed him even further. When was the last time you swung a club? August of last year. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> swim, swam, wing, wung. <laughs> it swung. <laughs> when was the last time you swinged a club? Swinged a club. <laughs> <laughs> How was Mexico last week? Oh, it was wonderful. It's a beautiful. I mean, it's hot as balls down there this time of year. I'll be there next month. I think I showered twice a day. Yeah. Did you play any tennis? Oh, yeah. We played every day. Oh. We played every single. Well, because, you know, it's Lisa and I, and Lisa and I played tennis, and we'd... Did you we, play some of the locals? Oh, can I tell you a terrible story? Go ahead. So this is what I like about my relationship with Lisa. She has no problem calling me out on my bullshit. Yeah. There's a friend of mine in the neighborhood named Ruben. You know Ruben. Yeah. Phenomenal human being. So I go there the first day. We see him playing tennis. We're watching him. And we go to like a party that night. And I'm like, oh, Ruben, we should play. Me, 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 and, me and Lisa versus you. Great, we'll do that. Next tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, see you there. So we get together, 8 o'clock in the morning. You got your matching outfits on, six, the shoes? We had the matching shoes. 65 year old 70 year old guy and his wife 65 year old guy and his wife they're just dinking the ball I'm like oh I'm gonna smoke them they beat us really they had these angle shots so I was like okay I wasn't upset that night we go he's bragging everybody I beat Paul I beat Paul I beat Paul I was like we'll do it again tomorrow what changed Um, so the next day we start the match they win the first game it's okay I'm just getting settled in they win the second game it's all right. we're not bad Third game. Okay, hang on a second. Uh-oh. We got the fourth game. Okay. We're getting the, Lisa just said, I'm getting livid. Like, I'm being a dick. Are you and Lisa at each, at each other now? No. Lisa, oh. so I'm, and she's trying to pep me up. It's okay, Paul. We're down 5 0 in the first set. We lose the first set 6 0. I take my racket. I hit the fence like a little brat. <laughs> she's pissed at me. She rightly, because Ruben's a nice, Ruben and his wife, Consuelo, are the nicest people in the world. They're joking. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm looking at Ruben going, like, I'm going to fucking. I'm like doing the, 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 Next, the, the throat the, slash. The, yeah, the throat slash. I'm like flicking him, literally flicking him off and everything. Six zip. Six zip first set. 
So the second set starts and I'm like, okay, at least I'll serve. She's like, you're not serving. I'm like, oh, she's like, and you're getting the other side right now. So we win the first game. So I look at her and she's ignoring me completely as she should, because I'm being an asshole. Wow. So I look at Lisa, I go, Lisa, I, I, I'm really sorry. And she goes, sorry for me. You got to apologize to those super nice people. They're being so nice and you're being a freaking brat. I mean, but she didn't say freaking. She said, you're being a fucking brat. I was like, oh, damn, she's right. So I was like, Ruben Consuelo, sorry I'm being an asshole. I'm just being a baby, blah, blah. We won the match. We won the next two sets and we won the match. Wow. But she was just like, you don't, be, you don't, don't apologize to me. Apologize to those nice people over there. They're being so nice and joking with you and you're being a fucking brat. I was like- The turning point. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I apologize. But we won the match, so I was happy. <laughs> wow. We got smoked the first set 6-0. It was bad, Seth. Visit LuxuryZLO.com if you want to see this beautiful Mexican home and you can just rent it and go like I am next month. And then we go back in January and we're freaking living there. I go there in November and then January. Incredible. All right, bro. Thanks for joining us on the podcast, everyone. Stay tuned. We're going to be doing this for the next 20 years, so hopefully this gets interesting. Awesome. Love you. Bye. Bye.